Uh, okay, now uh, let me introduce you, and, I, and then I'll let you introduce yourself. But uh, we played we played a video, uh, I believe, with you featured in it uh, yesterday here on the Kill Stream. This is how the Independent. I'm not a huge fan of their paper, but. I'm going to go ahead and I, I could use some of their copy anyway. Uh, the UK Independent, uh, they, they called you controversial uh, Canadian pastor uh, Arthur uh, Palowski uh, filmed calling police Nazis uh, during Easter service. Uh, and we watched this video yesterday. We may play it again here in a minute. Um, but first off, explain who you are uh, and, and a little bit of your ministry and, and how I guess the police got to be there uh, on Easter Sunday in the first place. Well, you know, it's very interesting that they love to call me controversial. It looks like everyone uh, that right now is standing up for his rights and is uh, calling those people for who they are is controversial. Um, what they want is you to submit, to obey, not to question, because if you dare to say anything, you will be called a lawbreaker, troublemaker, anti-masker, anti-vaccine, controversial. Um, what happened? 13 months of abuse and intimidation. That's what happened. Police officers coming to our services, uh, being outside of our church with their police in their uniforms. They have been blocking our entry to the church on parking lot. They have been giving me tickets. I got 28 COVID tickets so far. And, uh, telling me that they cannot feed the poor, that they cannot, uh, you know, have church services, telling me that I cannot uh, congregate. And if I do, I'll get a million dollars ticket. And um, I got summons to court. Or, you know, I got, look at this. You know, like <laughs> this is. Wow. You mm. know, I it's, it's unbelievable. So. Um, now, you're in Calgary, by on. the way. And go ahead. I just want to point that out. The people were asking in the chat what part of Canada you were in. Now, go ahead. Continue. I don't want to cut you off. Yeah. Calgary, Alberta. So this has been going on for 30 months, just like around the world. Uh, those uh, Nazi Gestapo, communists, uh, wannabe dictators, they're just gaining more and more power. They're using this crisis, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, as an excuse to extend their power two weeks and then it's two weeks more and then it's four weeks more uh, and a never ending story. And uh, interesting thing is, is one law for me, one law for D. They are telling you to stay home, but they themselves are flying, going to Hawaii, Barbados, Belize. Uh, they're visiting their parents. They got their private choppers. They got the private uh, mansions in Florida, California, and they can do whatever they want, but they tell you stay home. Also, they say to you and me, we are in this together, and yet you're losing businesses, you're losing money, and they are getting full pension, they're getting full salary plus bonuses. Believe it or not, we are in the greatest crisis during our lifetime, and sure. they just gave themselves a raise, those people. And they tell you and me, we are in this together. So this has been going on for almost a year, over a year, 13 months, and finally, when I saw them walking into my church, when I've told them many times, do not, do not, you have no permission to come in. You cannot legally come in. You got to get the warrant. And they just walked in. And I didn't know. I was taken, I have to admit, I was taken by surprise. I was not expecting police in the church. I thought they were never there to do that, but they did. And I was like, wow, that's how I was I'm raised. Like the police won't come in the church basically. Right. Like, Oh, that's sacrosanct. They won't even do something like that. That's how, you I know, he, yeah, go ahead. Th that's right. You know, historically speaking, if you look even at the middle ages, the knights, they were not allowed to enter yeah. the church. They had to leave their swords outside of the church. And now Thanks suddenly sure. that's right. It's a, it's our sanctuary It's our, you know, heaven, if you will, a place, that we feel at peace, we feel protected. The people that come to the church, they come to the church for a specific purpose and reason. That's why Canada has a uh, criminal code protection on this. Those officers that entered, you know, they, are, they can be facing five years jail time if I press charges. They broke criminal code. They're facing five years of imprisonment, mandatory for what they've done. Um, so when I saw them, 
I just walked to them and I said, get out. And they would not budge. So I ran into the pulpit where I had my camera, my cell phone, and I just grabbed the cell phone. And I know those people, they have no problem to lie. So I record <laughs> every interaction I have with them. And I started to record. And then the rest is history. I didn't plan anything. I just said what was on my heart. And it was Passover, Easter, you know, that was um, uh, one of the greatest uh, celebrations that we have in the year, Christmas, Easter, Passover yes, celebration. That's right. And they just walked in like it was their home. Um, they wanted to tell me, I know what they wanted to tell me. They wanted to tell me their mantra that they have been telling me 50 times before this outside. I'm not interested to hear anything that they had to say because whatever they had to say, it was garbage. It was not factual. The data, the data shows everything they're saying is just a bunch of corrupted lies. And I was not interested to hear them, those lies, during my church service. I mean, this is Easter not the time for a discussion. This is not the time for a discussion. This is not the time for a debate. Get out. This is a church service. So eventually they did, and they did not come back with the warrant. And to this day, um, I didn't receive anything from them. They didn't send me an email. They didn't send me an apology and uh, nothing. I was actually surprised when I finished my sermon because I kicked them out. I placed uh, a security outside the wind, uh, the doors, uh, just in case those Nazis want to come back. Uh, and, you know, why, why do I call them Nazis? Because yeah, this is the great question that people are asking me all over. Because they have been acting like Nazis for the past year. They, they pretend that they're upholding the law. They pretend that they're here to save me, to help me, to protect people. But yet they're breaking the Constitution at the same time. They're lawbreakers. Just like the Nazis, you got to remember Nazis, um, Adolf Hitler did not start the war uh, right away. It took him over a 10-year period of time that he was raising his army. He was, he was raising his brown shirts. He was raising his Gestapo SS. He was raising his backing. And now what we're seeing is identical approach by the authorities. A law doesn't matter. They come in the name of the law, but they're breaking the law uh, right in front of our faces. That's why I call it very them, obvious right? how much they hate Christianity as well. I mean, we saw in London, a Catholic Easter mass was broken mm. up by the police. Um, and nobody's defending Christians. You know, on Good Friday, a movie called The Unholy was just released. And uh, it's about the Virgin Mary, but it's a horror movie. It's it's sacrilege and blasphemy, but nobody besides Christians are standing up for our rights. And so many people around the world are so proud of what you did because so many priests and pastors didn't fight back. But you're one of the first, I believe, to actually stand up to the police. So very, very inspiring what you did. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm very humbled by this. I just, I'm a shepherd. I, my job is to protect the people that God has given to me. Those are uh, elderly women with children. They come to the church believing that they will be protected, that their pastor is going to stand up when the villains, evil, will come storming. And that's, that's what I did. I don't think I, I, don't think I did something uh, extraordinary. I just stood up for them. I stood up for my rights and they had no rights to be there. They were coming there only to intimidate and harass. So I needed to do something about that. And my message to the leaders is very simple. Are you true leaders? Are you willing to stand up and fight? I, who are you working for? That's my question. Are you working for God or are you working for government? If you're working for government, you should change your title from a priest or a pastor or a clergyman, reverend to something else, a politician perhaps. I work for God. And in my Bible is very clear that we are to gather, that I am to pray for the sick, that I am to protect those that God has given to me, feed the poor, take care of the orphans and the widows. 
Um, that's a very simple thing for me. I have been doing this for 22 years. And uh, people ask me, if they would come back, would you react the same way? Yes. And if they will come back next week, this Saturday, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'll kick them out if they dare to come again. If they will have the audacity to break the law again, now, you, I will press charges. But you say it's them. nothing, but I mean, how many people do you know? I know a lot of people who, t who talk a big game and then, you know, when they show up, it's like, okay, whatever. I'll do whatever they say. Like, I mean, you know people like that, right? Like, how many people are afraid in, in your own life, people you know who just won't speak out against this sort of thing? You know, I'm uh, one of the, I guess, few privileged people because my church is a church of lions. We okay. have amazing people. I have been training them to actually believe in the Bible for years. And when I preach, I try to preach a message that is filled with history and bi biblical passages, but also make it relevant to what we are seeing right now. So when I teach, I want to make a comparison. I want to show them, look, what happened 3,000 years ago, now it's happening again. What happened during the Romans, it's happening again. What happened during the Nazis and Stalinism, the Soviets, it's happening again. You have to be vigilant. You have to see what's going on. And you got to stand up and fight. you got to understand that the, in order to kick out the darkness, you have to switch, you have to switch the light. That's it. Amen. In order to push the evil, you got to stand up against that evil. You know, the, the only thing that is, uh, you know, stopping evil from spreading is good people refusing to do what they are required to do. And it's always the right thing to do, to do the I'm, right thing. I'm so glad you're saying that because so many Christians have this weird dualist view where they just say, well, the world is the world and we need to just let God sort things out. And they, they take this, this approach where they just step back and they stop being involved in the world and they allow things to get bad. But yeah. the Bible is about standing up for what's right. And I'm so happy that you're actually telling Christians to try to make the world a better place. You know, the Bible from the very beginning to the very end is calling us to do something. Jesus Christ didn't say, I love you, and he sat down on his throne. He said, I love you, and he came. He was born, and he lived, and he hung around with sinners, and then eventually he died for our sins. He didn't say, I love you, but I will not feed you. He fed the poor. He didn't say, I, he didn't say, I, I love you, but uh, I'm not going to heal you. I have the power to heal you, but I will not do it. He was a doer, not just a talker. Talk is cheap. God was all about doing. Christianity is about doing. Historically speaking, when you look at the history, the church was taking care of the lepers. The church was feeding the poor. The church was building orphanages. The church was building hospitals. The church was doing all the charity work. The church was always about doing in the most difficult moments in the history of any country. When Let's talk about America and Canada. When the immigrants came here in 1600s, 1700s, they were pilgrimage. They, 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 they were people that escaped persecution in Europe. And immediately when they arrived here, they started to build hospitals, schools, orphanages. They started to be involved in the neighborhoods. In That's what church is doing, and that's what the church is supposed to be doing. I don't understand what happened to the clergyman that right now the government says, oh, you cannot pray for people. Okay, no problem. You have to shut down your doors. Even the black flag didn't shut down the doors of the church. The wars didn't shut down the church's doors. Communism, fascism, even in China, we have millions upon millions of Christians that are refusing to shut down and they are preaching and they are congregating. And what happened to the Western society? Oh, you can get a ticket. Oh, if I can get a ticket, okay, I have to obey the governments. And they just shut down. I, I guess during the Nazi era, Everything Adolf Hitler said was legal. Everything he did was lawful, right? According to him. So 
he passed the law, let's murder all the Jews. I guess today's Christians and the pastors and the priests would say, okay, that's what the government says. That's what we have to do. Here are the Christians, okay, hiding behind me. Take them because that's the wish. That's the wishes of the government. Now I see I see this super chat here from uh, Golden Donut. He says he says the West is lost. Let it fall apart. Salvation in Christ only. What do you say to that's a pretty dire, you know, kind of a tough statement, right? Like I don't know. I you know it seems pretty sad to to, to let yourself go there. But what do you think? Is it really that bad off? You know. You know what I'm thinking is that we always have hope. There is always hope. God is a loving God. He wants to save America. He wants to shake America. And you know what? Let me tell you. Uh, let me suggest to you that he is already shaking America. He's shaking all of us. He wants our attention. I think God is knocking and he wants our attention. Uh, is there hope? There is always hope with God. We just have to tune in to what he wants us to do. We have to repent, we have to go to our knees, and we have to say, God, we've messed up our beautiful country. You have given us the best and the most beautiful country on the planet Earth, and we have made a big mess. Help us. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Right? He And, and, and then I will answer, and I will heal their land. So the thing is, we have to make the... We have to make the first step. We have to go to God and say, God, forgive us. And I'm telling you, if we if we will do the, do this with a sincere heart, uh, God is going to uh, to to do a revolution. I'm waiting for a revival. I'm wait, waiting for a revolution, spiritual revolution, awakening. I'm waiting for a new reform reformation. And I think it's happening. It's about to happen. I think more and more people are being awakened. They're rising up. And it's exciting times as much as I don't like tickets, as much as I don't like police officers coming and harassing, and intimidating me. This is our time to shine. We have a cloud of witnesses right now that are cheering us on and saying, come on, we've done it. We did it. The people before us did it. Now it's your turn. Push, push, I think push. what you said there, Amen. and I, I've talked about this too, and I'm going to let the panel get into if they want, but um, uh, what you said uh, about it being, yeah, there's some tough stuff going on, but also it's exciting too uh, that you're not, you know, this this is still an exciting time even with, with a lot of his challenges, maybe even because of those challenges uh, as well. Uh, now we'll go around the panel. Maybe we'll watch a little bit of the video too. Uh, we're not going to keep you all night, uh, but anybody have any questions uh, here? for the awesome guest uh, who's getting a, a warm welcome uh, in the chat before we play. We played it last night, but I feel like we have to watch a little bit of it here. Uh, Mr. Archer. Yeah, play it again. Oh, it's Oscar. great. Should we? Really I mean, I, all right, you know what? Let's just play it, honestly. Okay, let me switch screens here to the um, to the three tab. Okay, now we're back there. All right, we'll go ahead and play it. We played it last night. I didn't know. Never did I think you would be on here tonight, honestly, uh, when we played it. Um, not that it was so far fetched, but I just didn't think. Oh, the next day you would be here, uh, but here he is. Okay, now let me go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so you can see it better. Okay, what are you eating, Culture War? God, you always make me hungry. I never eat until after the show. It's pizza too. Oh, my. and pizza, yeah. You know, you know, it's a very interesting thing because, of course, as you know, um, I am being bombarded with uh, invitations. Sure. I was from the morning to now. I was just on Fox News. You're right. Um, you know, and um, but I, you know, I kind of stopped answering and um, I said, OK, fine, I have uh, this uh, moment. Uh, let's do it. Uh, but I didn't even have time yet to eat all day. So wow. you're making me hungry this I know, man. He's getting <laughs> me too. I haven't eaten since lunch. Oh my god! Uh, now, all right. By the way, thank you so much for coming on. I, I could only imagine. I literally, I googled your name, and there was, and you know, I don't know, a couple thousand news stories, and like you said, Fox News and everything else. Uh, now we're we're gonna watch this. Oh, the pizza did make me growl. Okay, we're not gonna watch the full. I think the one on your. By the way, plug your Facebook real quick because I saw it. Uh, uh, some of your social media and places people can find you too before we watch this. Yeah, if you are interested in hearing me preach, I've, I, I'm doing historical uh, preaching, I'm uh, making this whole thing relevant to what we're facing today. Go to Artur Pavlovsky TV, Artur Pavlovsky TV YouTube channel or Street Church Calgary. You can go to my Facebook page, Artur Pavlovsky. Um, it, I'm not hard to find. 
My home address is a public domain. Uh, my telephone is still the same for 20 years. Um, if you need something, if you want me to pray with you, uh, send me an email, art, A-R-T, at streetchurch.ca. And if you want to help us, I mean, I need to hire some very powerful lawyers to fight this oh, yeah. because it's getting crazier and crazier. You can support me, art at streetchurch.ca. Uh, you can e-transfer. You can uh, uh, go to our website, www.streetchurch.ca. And, uh, you know, you can support uh, this little fight uh, that I have. Um, the giants are big, but my God is a lot bigger than the giants. And let me remind you this one story. I named the church that I'm pastoring right now. I pastor two churches. One is street church that feeds thousands of people on the streets of Calgary every week. But also I pastor a church that those police officers walked in. It's called the Cave of Adullam. The Cave of Adullam is a story when David was hunted down by authorities, by King Saul, and he hid himself in a fortress in a Cave of Adullam. And when the people heard about this, when they heard that David, their champion, is there, they joined him. And from that, he created his army that everyone was afraid of. In the end, we read the mighty men of David. So uh, you can come to our church if you're in Calgary area. We would be, we would be honored to have you uh, worshiping with us. You can listen also live. I stream awesome. our sermons live, Art, Art of Polosky, uh, Facebook. Uh, so... Just be part, and if you're not in the area, go, be bold, be courageous. We are lions following the lion from the tribe of Judah. We're not hyenas. Let the hyenas walk out of the doors. We are the lions fending off the wolves, and uh, we got to be courageous. This is a time for heroes and champions of God. This is not the time for cowards. By the way, Chad's asking that we're gonna watch the video before we let you go. Chad's asking to have you back. Hopefully, we can have you back because you've been the best guest we've had, uh, one of the best guests we've had this year. So we definitely would like to have you back sometime if you're down. Uh, I see uh, Golden Donut says reach out to Viva Free a Lawyer in Canada. He will be able to connect you to lawyers. Uh, I don't know that person, but I'll look him up too. Uh, maybe send you that email if if that's legit. I'm sure it is. Golden Donut's legit, but I'll look into it myself. Uh, all right. One of our uh, co-hosts is also Canadian. He tells us all the time about how crazy the lockdowns have gotten up there. They were bad down here, but Canada is taking it even one step further. It looks like. Yeah, he's been complaining yeah, about it for months. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Canada, Canada has been liberal. Canada has been communist. Uh, communistic and socialistic for a long time. Uh, so there's no surprise for me that Canadian government is is pushing this agenda because think about it if you want to uh, if you want to bring dictatorship you have to create a reason you have to create a false crisis. Now they have invisible virus uh, we have a pandemic and by the way the pandemic that last year less people died in Calgary in Alberta than the year before. We had less people in the hospital in the city of Calgary than the year before. And I'm, all, you know, I'm simply asking questions. Where is the data? Where, where is your proof that we are actually in the middle of pandemic? Because your own data is showing that less people were in the hospitals, not more. Where is the crisis? So they are using this to enslave you. They are using this to eliminate middle class because middle class is highly educated, well-traveled, um, hardworking people generation after generation, and if they see a lie from the government, they will fight, they will hire lawyers. You, they need to destroy uh, small and middle, middle-sized businesses because those people have money and they are the driving force of economy. What they want, and they're implementing this, is this great reset, extremely wealthy and extremely poor. Why? Because you can control the masses when the masses are poor, Believe me, I grew up in a country that was controlled. 36 million Poles were controlled by 50,000 communists. Yeah, and I saw some people in chat mentioning that. I guess we could do a whole show on that, actually. With you. But uh, I guess what, what was your big takeaway from, from communist rule there? Uh, that's kind of a big question, I guess, but uh, just a little insight into that since you alluded to it there. You know, communism is a horrible thing. It's hell on earth. A police can come to your house five in the morning, break the door, beat you up, torture you, arrest you for no reason. Um, there, there was no law. There was lawlessness. There was no justice. Um, there was a famous saying that I always repeat, 
by the police officers, they always said, uh, give me a man and I will find something on that man. Uh, you were dragged before the courts. The courts were corrupted. No one followed constitution. No one was allowed to follow, uh, to follow constitution. Um, you, it was propaganda at every corner. There was no freedom of press. They had to uh, pump you every day with propaganda, with lie after lie after lie. You couldn't just say, I don't like this, what the government is doing. You would be tackled to the ground. You would be arrested. You would lose your job. You would be tortured. And there was nowhere you could go. You couldn't go and say, oh, they've done this to me. Right. Because if you complained, they would beat you up again and they would arrest you. And, and some clergymen, a famous clergyman, when they were uh, daring to say anything against the communist government, they disappeared. And then 30, 40 years later, they were finding their bodies. People were disappearing on a regular basis. They were, the police would come into the house, they would take your husband or your wife away, and you would never see them again. And no one would know what happened to you. That's communism. Don't kid yourself. Communism is not this cute thing that everyone is equal. I'm telling you, 50,000 communists had everything their heart desired. 36 million Polish people were enslaved. By the way, um, yeah, there wasn't, you know, you didn't write a letter to the editor and stuff like that. There wasn't a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? There wasn't a place to go blow off steam, complain about how things were going. They would crack your skull and throw you in some kind of camp or whatever. Um, and by the That's way, right. yeah, and I see chat. Uh, also, we have over 1,000 viewers uh, now, about 1,100 watching us live uh, across two platforms here, trovo.live slash the Ralph Retort and uh, Chill Stream Clips, the Restreamers over on YouTube. All right, uh, we're not going to keep you all night. I know you're hungry. Let me go ahead and play this clip. Uh, we got it two minutes, 20 seconds. Uh, one of the best guests of the year so far uh, on the show. Thank you. Sorry, let's watch this clip though. This is the famous one. We watched it last night, but we got to see it again. All right, let's hit it right now. Please get out. Get out of this property immediately. Get out. Okay. Get out of this property okay. immediately. Out. I don't By the way, to they did seem a little startled. They're not used to being talked to like that. It seemed um, not a lot of people. I know you said no big deal, but I, I have to disagree a little bit. It, you know. If they had gotten more pushback like this more often, we might not be in this spot now, you know, where they feel like they have that that freedom to even come up in your church on Easter Sunday. The the fact that they would even think that that was something that would ever be cool, uh, you know what I mean? That's just uh, bizarre. Um, all right, let's go ahead and continue right now. Out of this property immediately. I don't want to hear a word. Out. Out. Out of this property immediately until... <laughs> You'll come back with a warrant. Out. 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 Out of this property. Immediately out. Immediately close out and don't come back. Don't come back. Oh, my God. Out of this property. She's still trying to talk some crazy. No. I don't care what you have to say. Exactly. Out. Out of this property. She's been trying to talk this whole time with some wild... Out! <sighs> Gestapo is not allowed here. <laughs> Get out! Immediately, Gestapo is not allowed! It's righteous indignation. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like, it's like when Christ drove the money changers out of the temple. You know, there's, you, can, you can have righteous anger, you know, and it, it's a very, you know, good thing. Out! By the way, it looked like that woman was leading them all, too. Not what kind of group is this? I don't, know. I don't know. And don't come back without a warrant. <laughs> That's what, that was don't my favorite don't part. Come don't warrant. come back don't without a that. warrant. You're not welcome here. Nazis are not welcome here. Gestapo is not welcome here. Do not come back, you Nazi psychopath. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean. Sick. Evil people. Intimidating people in a church during On the Easter Passover. Sunday. Or Passover, you can yeah. Stop on Nazi, communist, fascists. Don't you dare coming back. Don't here. you dare come back now. Let me switch over uh, back to the two panel. You said this at the beginning of the interview. They haven't come back, have they? No, they didn't. And you know, I doubt they would dare to come back. They now have tasted the treatment of a lion. And I'm telling you, this Saturday, I was told we're going to have hundreds of lions that are coming to defend the church. I mean, if they were there to come, they would be eaten alive. Now, are you going to be broadcasting? Do you broadcast it live on Saturday? 
Yes, I will be broadcasting Artur Polowski TV live on my Facebook page. You will mm -hmm. be able to see uh, worship. And I don't uh, show people uh, in the church sure. because for their privacy. Uh, but people come for prayers and you will see that uh, I'm not terrified of the virus. I'm not terrified of uh, hugging people and crying with them. I preach um, a very historical messages. I try to make it everything relevant today. Uh, but I preach the Bible. Of course, I'm a pastor of the church. And uh, you're welcome to join us live. You're welcome to come to the church. The doors for you sure. will be open. Unless you're coming in the capacity of uh, Gestapo. The <laughs> then you're not welcome. Well, <laughs> then, then I will say the same thing to, 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 to you. Get out and come back with the Now, mark. one more question before you go. By the way, I will be tuned in uh, this Saturday. That's why I asked, and I think a lot of the audience will be too. Uh, but let me ask you, what's up on the wall there? Uh, people wanted me to ask you what's what's behind you and like, how did um, you get, collect that pelt there? Yeah, I, I love history, of course. I love uh, hunting. I'm a hunter myself. I hunt uh, meat. I love uh, white tail and mule deer, and we sure. hunt bears. Um, so, you know, I just love uh, Rocky Mountains. I love to walk in the mountains, in the forest. This is a cheetah behind me, and those spears are made from a monkey's hair. Um, so oh, wow. I, I just, uh, you know, I think uh, I, think I miss men. You know, what was an uh, you know it was an amazing time when a man was man. Now it's hard to recognize who is who. Men are acting like women. Women are acting like men. Um, so I guess uh, that reminds me that I'm still a man. Uh, it's okay to be a man. It's okay to be a hunter. It's okay to be a defender. If you come to my house, if you want to hurt my kids or my wife, I, I, you know I will whack you with a chair if I, if I need to. <laughs> You know, that just, um, I guess maybe because I'm Polish and we grew, up under, we grew up under very uh, tough, uh, you know, circumstances. We had to stand up and fight for everything. When I was a kid, it was like a big jungle. Uh, but, you know, I will never forget this time. I remember we were uh, hunted by paparazzis and uh, reporters. And one day, uh, one reporter wanted to do a national story and he asked if he can come to my house and spend a few days with us i said fine and he asked you know he spent time with me he saw how i'm feeding the people i will encourage you to watch a movie on my life street advocate it's a free movie on youtube street sure. advocate if you're interested why i do what i do but this reporter asked my wife this simple question and she caught us by surprise, including me. He asked her this, what do you think is the biggest problem in our society right now? And I thought, you know, I thought being a preacher's wife, she's going to give some spiritual thing. And But this is what she said. She looked at him and she said, you know what? The biggest problem that we're facing right now is that men are not acting like men and women are not acting like women. And I was like, wow, wow. So what I'm saying is it's okay to be men. It's okay to have toys as men. We, you know, the people say, the psychologists are saying that men never grew up. And in a way, that's true. I love to hang around with boys. I love to, uh, you know, have toys and go to the mountains and shoot some venison for my plate. And um, those things, and I have a bear here, uh, a black bear, and I have uh, other things in my office when i work here when i prepare my sermons and i look sometimes at those things that i have and the cheetah behind you know it reminds me that it's okay to be a man it's okay to be tough it's okay to voice your opinion it's okay to sometimes say hey not an inch i am a man and so i say simply act like a man and ladies i mean my goodness i would not be able to do what i do with my, without my wife you think i'm brave she is the bravest one because she has to heal my wounds when I come back beaten by Antifa, beaten by BLM, beaten by the mainstream <laughs> media. And she heals me. She feeds me. You know, women, you're so strong. You just have to remain women. It's okay to be a woman. And guys, be a warriors, be fighters, be heroes for your wives and your children. You know, one day your kids will look into your eyes and they will say, Daddy, Father, why you didn't defend me? Why you didn't stand up for me when you could? When I look in the mirror, I am not ashamed of myself. When I look in the, in the eyes of my sons and my daughter, 
you know, I am able to say to them, your daddy did what I could. I did what I could. I stood the ground. I fought the Nazis. I fought the wolves. And if I failed, forgive me, but I did my best. And if I will perish, I will perish. It's okay. Maybe, hopefully, in the name of Jesus, another man will take my place. Sir, you did not fail tonight on the Killstream debut appearance. Arthur Perlowski, thank you, sir, so much for coming on the show. I hope to have you back. My my goodness. The Canadian you, Crusader. You are amazing, <laughs> the Canadian Crusader. I think that's your new name here on the show. Awesome. Thank awesome. You. Thank you for taking the time, sir. Thank you for having me, and I will be glad uh, to come back oh, and yes. chat with you guys again. I'll set that up for sure. Oh, quick plug. Tell people where to find you real quick right here at the end. I know you said it already, but. Art at streetchurch.ca, A-R-T at streetchurch.ca. You can send me an email. You can support us if you want, www.streetchurch.ca. YouTube channel, Art of Pawlowski TV, Street Church Calgary. And I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. I apparently, um, I didn't even use some of those uh, social networks, but apparently I got now a lot of followers, so I have to start using them. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm glad that people are catching up that fire because that's what we need right now in our countries. We need to rise up. And you know what? I want to finish with this. Sure. You don't have to, you don't have to like me. This is not the popularity contest. This is about fighting for what's right. This is fighting for the future of our children and our grandchildren. We have to unite, even if we disagree on certain topics. We have to unite because what they want to do to you and me is the same thing. They want to enslave us. It's like Islam. You know, when you talk to the Islamists, the jihadists, they don't care if you go to the Catholic Church or you go to the Protestant Church or you're Baptist or you're Pentecostal. They don't care. You are an infidel to them. The same with the governments right now. They don't look at you as you go to this church or that church or atheist or not. If you're not part of the party, their party, you're an infidel and they want to cut your head off. Don't allow them. Let's unite. In 1981, in Poland, with my own eyes, I saw the power of unified Poles when they took it to the streets during solidarity with Lech Wałęsa. I'm telling you, millions of people had enough. They went to the streets and they got their country back. Poland is right now one of the best democracies on the planet. Sure. It's true. And we talked about that a lot on the show, too, uh, what's going on in Poland. Sir, thank you so much. We're going to we're gonna have you back for sure. Uh, definitely uh, amazing guest here. Uh, thank you, sir. I uh, appreciate God you, Mr. You. Archer Perlowski. Uh, thank you, sir. God, God bless you. God bless you as well. Yes. Amazing debut appearance here. Wow. I'm so wow. glad I looked down and checked mm. my phone. Are you kidding me? Holy shit. That was legendary. I didn't even know how to quite to end it there at the end. I almost was a little nervous with how I was signing off, man. I hope, holy shit. That was just. 